I am unashamed. What about you? So uh, we've got, to, it's always an honor to, when we have one of our wives on the podcast, Missy, welcome back to Unashamed, back to the lair. Thank you. I'm missing Lisa. I know. Normally, Usually. normally that's our little routine, but we got to add I figured that was what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa's always good to have when anybody's on because her laugh is contagious, so, mm-hmm. you know, which is really good. Actually, be she, honest. Every time we have the wives on, the ratings go out three. They do. <laughs> yeah, people love the wives. I'm like. I don't. I think it's simple. Well, it's a simple thing. More women listen, <laughs> and we do have a lot of women listeners. Because when I was in Idaho last week, I mean, I, they just women kept coming up and said, "I'd love your podcast," you know, especially when your wives are on. So I, they were telling me that too. <laughs> of course, I've said it before, Dad. It gives me personal pleasure for Missy to be on because I love to see Jay squirm, which yeah. takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, of seeing Jay squirm, and so you know when Missy, who's a great truth teller to some of Jace's wild stories and the you know exaggerations. We have a combustible dynamic <laughs> relationship. In Look, here's here's and it has not always been that way. We've been married for thirty one years, and I say this when we do like any type of marriage seminar or interviews. I wasn't really trained on. Um, confrontation i'll say we just didn't really do that growing up so y'all's family is completely the opposite you kind of thrive on it (laughs) so whenever jace and i would disagree or something would come up in our relationship he would want to sit down and analyze it and just basically talk through every single detail well i would my mind really would just go blank like i don't want to do this i don't want to have this conversation let's just move on and we'll do better but he, nope, I want to hear what you have to say. Right. And I actually, it's, I, I have actually nothing. Like, it, it's almost like white noise in my brain. And when I said that one time in a marriage, I think it was at um, Reengage, yep. other people know exactly what I'm talking about. And so, but over the years, I've learned to not act like that, like react in a different way. And a couple of years ago, we had Trent at our house who, you know, we know Trent Langhofer. He has a doctorate degree in marriage and family therapy. We were sitting there talking, and he starts laughing. And we're like, what, what? He said, oh, I love the way that y'all communicate. And we were kind of disagreeing in front of him to each other because I said something, and Jason's like, babe, that's not, that's not true. It's not. I'm like, yes, it is. And Trent started laughing. He said, if I ever disagreed with my wife in front of somebody else, I would pay the price. <laughs> and he said, the way y'all communicate is really refreshing. And so I thought, okay, well, this must be good. Well, we're good at that, babe. <laughs> so we've come a long way. <laughs> Jace is already on record as saying is that the two of y'all had nothing in common at the beginning. Oh, believe other, me, I've heard that many other times. Other than Jesus. So that's, that's, Pick that's his Pick something line. we have in common. We've had this argument many times. Ready? Yeah, British crime shows. That was a slow developing situation. <laughs> that took twenty years. First twenty years, well, I was in there watching it by myself. <laughs> now all of a sudden, you've decided. Okay, let me try British it out. British crime like, shows. Well, there, like is there such a thing? Yes. I like Endeavor. Is it, is it on the BBC or yep. something? Yeah, it's on we, Prime Video. There's a ton. Watch. Oh really? I mean, oh, look, yeah. most heard people in life, is, you're going to watch Endeavor and say that's horrible. I think that's PG. I hope it is. <laughs> but Lisa and I have no such television connection. I mean, we, we there's a few movies, but I mean, like she likes those flip the house things. And after oh, like, I do too. We well, talked about no. this last oh, yeah, time I was yeah. on here. So, yeah. so I want to I want to mention that, Miss, before we get into because we got a couple of uh, things to talk about today with you. But so the last time you were on, you and Lisa were on. We had the Duffies were on. Oh yes. And so I just wanted to tell you that. We've had a lot of feedback from that, really positive. And in fact, um, which I was, I marveled like when when you were telling them uh, and and me about you know your adult kids and us you know getting together with a counselor and all the the pathway oh, yeah. you went through. Well, I could tell they were intrigued, you know, and, I, and I've talked to them since, and they're like, you know, we're we're going to do that with our kids, <laughs> really, yeah. But then we had a guy, Kenny, was here yesterday just listening in, and he told Jace, he's like, I mean. You and Missy hit home with me mm. and my wife, you know, about 
getting together with our kids. We're going to do that, mm. you know. And so th- it it helped a lot of people. So I just was going to thank you on the podcast for talking yeah. about. So it, at it, some point, co- counseling used to be a negative connotation, and I mean, I'm talking about spiritual, biblical theme counseling where you're tapping into the resources that really make a difference, which right. are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Right. But, I mean, what's wrong with your family getting together and having a weekend of Well, sharing? it's difficult. It, that's not something you just flippantly do. We, we were at a point, you know, with one of our children that she was just really not handling life very well. Right. And, you know. Which is a common thing among <clears throat> humans. Exactly. But stages and seasons. But when we said we just we need to we need to get something done. We need some type of intervention because it it's been the same cycle of, you know, the come to Jesus meetings that Jason and I have talked about for years that we did with our kids. They worked for the boys, you know, but with, you know, with me it was just it was a different situation right. and so it's somebody that we really prayed about and saw it after and she was she knows us right. she knows our situation as our family so so yeah it was um it was a turning point in our family and we've only gone up in all of our relationships well, since and, then. and and think about how many times you guys and i know mom and dad have lisa and i have a ton have provided wise counsel just from the bible to help people through a rough patch. And we're all just, you know, we're not trained other than we love the Lord and we have the Holy Spirit and we know a lot of the Bible. But there are people who have all those abilities and then also have some more training beyond that, which can help. And you mentioned Trent. I mean, a tremendous guy, you know, with great heart, knows the Word of Mm -hmm. God, great individual, but he also has some really good training to Mm -hmm. help other people through this. So counseling, you're right, Jason, it shouldn't be... That it's a negative. It should always. It should be a positive. You know, and there's everybody at some point in their life needs some wise counsel. To myself on that. Yeah, I knew you were. (laughs) I'm glad you repented to yourself. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) counseling. Well, and it's the you think about a generation removed. You know, my parents uh, and their friends and and that whole generation. I, I don't know that they would have ever called in a counselor and said we need some help with our family dynamic and in that situation. So, you know, I think just. What I've told my kids to, especially Reed and Brighton, because they're the ones that are married and, and just had a baby. But my, my goal is for you to parent better than we did. I hope that we parented better than my parents and so forth, because each generation, Jay says, take the meat and spit out the bones. You know, we want you to be better than us. It's not a competition, but that whole fall on the sword you know, talk about your mistakes. Those are not easy to do. Right. But boy, if you do it, it sure can make a difference with your relationships. Yeah, once I did it, it became easier. Right. Because then it's like it's disarming for your kids. I mean, they're like, I mean, well, Dad, you did this one time. And I'm like, yep, that was wrong. Yeah. Then it's like crickets. <laughs> 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 yep, I could have done that better. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, well, and what else you got? It's yep, imp- I was wrong on that too. <laughs> it's important to hear that. Now, are you going to use that and try to explain to God why, you know, you just went off the wrong end because I made a couple, you know, glaring mistakes or whatever? Right. So I don't know. There's something disarming about it. And, I mean, I, we, we, we did that with all our kids. You know, that was our exit strategy, I guess. But now we're trying to do it. Well, I love what the, the Duffy said. They were like, they do an exit interview with yeah. the kids when they're leaving home of course they got nine of them so i was like man you're gonna be doing interviews for a long time I have a calendar with a schedule <laughs> That's exactly right. which they're fantastic by the way so lisa and i were on their podcast uh last week and uh had a great time with them so it's a great couple so uh, from from the older people within a family structure <clears throat> you know you have your children and then you look up and they're married and their children are now they're college age, they're married, now they're having children. <laughs> I mean, and it seems this quick. Right. It's that quick. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, James said it was a vapor. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how fast the turnaround is and the generation underneath you. Yeah. Fortunate for us, I'm, 
Well, you used happy with the family structure the way it well, operates. Well, you, you and mom were blessed. I mean, you know, because you have you have five children that are all still married to all our of y'all original spouse. Well. You know, yeah. I mean that in, in a in modern America, that's I mean not all that might be a miracle. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Missy was listening to the last segment on the, <laughs> what now? the miracle. Yeah, shame. She said that might be a miracle. Yeah. She was oh. waiting to get a response out of you. You zoned out. That's okay. <laughs> but that was was structure <laughs> where all of them are godly. I mean, you're like, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. I'm going to tell you. Well, you know, Very if you and mom, so. dad are blessed with, health to have you know another yeah. another decade even see it you're gonna have you're gonna have you're gonna get great great grandchildren yeah. i mean carly's 16 years old mm-hmm. she's like your oldest great granddaughter you're putting your hand over your eye you used to used to look for ducks across the horizon now you're yeah. trying to see all the kids that are trailing <laughs> yeah. off into the distance yeah i'm like where in the world <laughs> now when we have a get together i'm like you know, get you go up and get some more. <laughs> now, my favorite is when, when Phil says, looks at a kid and says, "Now, who are you?" Yeah, what's your name? <laughs> uh, I actually you? fell for your. <laughs> now, which one does this belong to? Who, who I, is this one? The Mr. last <laughs> gathering, I actually recommended name tags. <laughs> And well, Willie and Corey thought that was ridiculous. I was like, I don't know half the people in here. Like, you know, you think about it. I'm not raising y'all's children. Well, and right. I'm not there to see day by day, year by year. I, you know, I every think once we in a while, should I'm have name tags. Giving at, Christmas, at okay, gathers. birthday. But they come up with all these other things. But I'm looking at them, and I, that's why I'm saying it's just so fast. Well, I agree. Well, Dad, like you- some of these little kids, Al, y'all, you know, from your – your side. I mean, they. They. I look up two years, and they're a lot bigger. But they don't recognize. Yeah, that's like, right. What's your name? And he's like, well, who are the, you? The I'm Corby. I'm like, kind of questionable. Like, well, you've grown. Hey, I didn't think that was you. And then he's got his. You know, the old party. leaving home, and you know, late teens, early twenties, and this particular culture, the dating begins. Your children date. Next thing you know, whoop, we have a marriage. Oh, we have a birth. We have another birth. Yet, yeah. well, one, and, and you look over here and they say, "Yeah, they over here. They're having their effect." I mean, it just. <laughs> but, but in your all I can say is it just happens. In your case, rapidly. Dad, we've already established you can't remember when we were born. No, so, <laughs> so you're never going to remember four generations, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm looking at you two gray whiskers, and I call y'all erroneously young bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and all of a sudden it happened. To me. I looked around. I said, "Good night." They all got gray hair, losing hair. I mean, it just oh, happened. Man. It just That's happened a... quickly. Al, that's so all I'm saying. I understand. Yeah. And but look, what a what a blessing. I mean, mm-hmm. you, know, yeah. you read about in in Psalms and Proverbs mm-hmm. the idea to be able to experience the generations oh, of, your, of your legacy. It's a I mean, wonderful mm-hmm. thing. It is, and God has blessed us tremendously. I mean, I was saying about that. We had a little a young boy that's a grandchild of some of our church members and he almost drowned. He's still alive, but they're not sure. And, and when that, when I got that news and I was just on my knees praying for this kid, cause I, you know, I have five year old grandchildren and the idea of a grandparent thinking about having to deal with that. And, and yet we've been so blessed as a family. We've had very little, you know, tragedy and, you know, things like that. And so many people have so much of that. So I, mm-hmm. my heart goes out. I know there's people listening that, have undergone terrible tragedy of losing children and grandchildren. And I'm just saying, you know, in me praising God for our blessing, I don't want everyone to take away from your loss and how hard that is. By the way, I have made it my policy, and I hope that I have fulfilled that. In other words, I've tried my very best not to get on the telephone somewhere and start saying, yeah, y'all need to be there. I'm I don't do that. You notice that you don't get irate phone calls from me ever. I know, and I appreciate that. And hey. and really, and truly, Dad, you 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 raised us with a lot of independence and freedom. Yep. And which I appreciate. One time I, I do that. One time I squandered it, but I, I, now I appreciate it. Let's, unless hang on, unless we're talking about the water elevation at the duck hole, then yeah. it might be a little <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little cranky for that. Let's take a break. So one of the the fun things about uh, a lot of our sponsors are that we kind of it's, it's groups that we share a lot of the same values with, and uh, one of our sponsors is, is a group called Good Ranchers, and these guys came down and spent a little time with us, and actually uh, Stone grilled up some of their steaks, and we really enjoyed them, 
And what I like about them is that first they're godly people and had a ministry background. So we share a lot in common with them, but also, I mean, they really love our country and they're trying to help save, um, you know, farms and ranches uh, because so much beef now and pork and other things have become imported from other countries. And so they're really trying to, you know, be America first, but also be godly and God first as well. So we like these guys. We really want to, you guys to support what they're trying to do as they support us. So check them out. You go to goodranchers.com slash Phil and, or, and use the code Phil at checkout. You're going to get $20 off and free shipping. And so they're going to send this product you know, straight to your house. You're talking about T-bones and ribeyes and fillets. Their chicken is fantastic. All the beef is uh, raised right here in the USA, 100%. So check them out, goodranchers.com slash Phil, or use the code Phil at checkout to get $20 off and free shipping. So Missy, tell us about you. You've written a book, mm-hmm. and so and and Can I show it. And, yeah, and today, and I read really, it. Release day is today, right? Um, today, March first. Is yeah, that yeah. today? Yeah. Okay. Yesterday. So yes, it comes out today, March first. It's called "Because You're My Family." It's one in a series of books uh, with Brave Books. So this is book number eight, but it's the ninth book. So there's a book zero is why that happens. But do they um, do? They are like you have more books coming out. Well, not me. I'm just oh. one author in this series of books. Uh, by the way, so I I was right. looking through the stack and I recognized so many names in yeah. there. It was really impressive. Yeah, you're a part of a great group of people. Well, do you feel pressure on that? Maybe? Um, not really. Well, see, you're so tough. <laughs> you're tough. <laughs> well, the Confident. subject that I was given was amazing. And it is unconditional love of a family. And so what happens in this book, just a little synopsis, is young Valor, who is um, a tiger and is adopted by his lion parents, which is another book in the series that you can read and and talk about. But um, he, he gets up in the morning because he has plans to play with his fun uncle. So these animals can talk. Always, they always talk in children's books. I know you missed out on that as a child, but well, in children's books. That was books, directed at you, Phil. <laughs> or, or mom. <laughs> and your mom. Yeah, I'm not, I, I never dug that deep into the animal world. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we, 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 we did have Dr. Seuss. I do remember Dr. Yeah, Seuss. the rhyming thing. That's the only one I ever read. Really? Like, Abbott and the cat, he took a bat and went out and saw <laughs> a rat and... It was tip for Sam, time. I am this green gets, eggs and ham. <laughs> Whatever. This gets more and more sad the more we talk about that. But <laughs> Go ahead, baby. Miss I hated so We much. needed more authors like so you, much. Missy. We needed more people like you in our Simple life. Simple question. I, I mean, I was just wondering why lions. I was thinking ducks, Because maybe. children relate to animals. Okay. So when the animals come to life, it just keeps them interested. So I would say for years and years that has been the 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 point of having children's book animals and children's books but his lion parents so they're lion not lying lion yeah with manes parents well he um he was like, adopted kind of looks like me but the a little bit yeah. yeah and look at her yeah a little bit a little bit oh yeah i could see that <laughs> the this. illustrations are really beautiful in here but anyway i'll tell you the story <laughs> really quickly he disobeys. He disobeys his mom. She has other plans um, for him that day. They're to serve a lady down the street. Well, a lady, a lady bunny who just had a baby down the street. And they're going to make her a carrot cake. So she sends him out to the garden to get the carrots. And they're going to make a carrot cake and send that to her that day. Well, he just, he's upset because he was going to go play with his fun uncle and which we have a fun uncle we have a fun uncle so but in the book his name is moby oh but anyway so he he's upset he's mad and he goes and picks all the carrots and then just gets madder and madder and ends up dumping them in the ditch Mm. and then he realizes "Uh uh-oh i'm fixing to get in some trouble here so he runs and hides and stays out all the rest of the day the rains come the storms come his parents get worried and start looking for him and catch him basically as he almost falls into the overflowing river brings him back into the warm and safe home and this little conversation happens which is really the point of the whole book and valor says daddy why did you save me all i've done today is pout and disobey 
And the father says, I don't love you because you obey me. I love you because you're my son and nothing can change that. So the point is, no matter how much we mess up, how much we disobey, all the flaws that we have, the father's love is never going to run out for us. He's always going to be there for us. Because we are family, because yeah. we are his children. Where in the world did you get this idea from? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> but here's the other part, is that he keeps on saying, he says, of course, there will be consequences for your actions. You'll need to apologize to your mother and help her regather the carrots, but nothing will ever change how much I love you. Well, and you may get some so, over that line, babe. There's what? consequences for your actions. Well, that's the way it is, you know. I mean, he ha- he was trained. Word. To and in this world, you no, know, there's no consequences. What? Well, I don't I don't know. I booked two on that. I don't I don't yeah. know. But um, what I love I love little Valor's response because when his when they go to bed that night, his parents become sick because they've been out looking for him, you know, in the rain, and he realizes that. So he gets up the next morning and makes them a carrot cake for breakfast. Where'd you get that idea? And is that a Miss Kay's carrot cake? Well, that's what that was his chore to begin with. Was yes. And bunnies yes. like carrots, so that's yeah, right. I there you go. That, right? So there. here's here's his line, and this is this. Are we ruining the book for everybody? No, no, the, no they have. It's they a need children's to get it. book. What's yeah. the age group for this? Probably four to ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, let me finish We're this. We're selling the book, Dave. I'm Come trying on. to. But well, you I just interrupted. I didn't know if it was like a movie where you <laughs> welcome, don't want to share the to end. Out of shame podcast. I guess. <laughs> do we have any ten year old listeners? I mean, but they're going to buy it for their kids, Jace. Uh, Dave, I'm uh, I'm selling to the parents, not the eight year old. Doesn't have his debit card. He's yet. still trying to figure out how the line is. You'd talking. be surprised. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Man. I give up. <laughs> no, don't give up. Keep going. You're doing well. God, the right. rest of us are okay. getting it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, this is a conversation about the book. Go ahead. All right, we're ready. Go. Go. You sure? <laughs> this, this is why I love having you on the podcast. But <laughs> Here's little Valor, what he says. He's sorry he disobeyed his mom, and he says, I'm sorry you're both sick because of me. From now on, I'm going to love you the way you love me, not because you give me my way, but because you're my family. So he learns gratitude is that, which also mirrors our life because of what Jesus did for us. Yeah. We want to live a life of gratitude because of that. So, yes, so that's the that's the synopsis of the book. Mm. And um, I know most people, well, I, I don't watch the podcast I listen but if you're watching it does have some really cute illustrations in it and I think my favorite one of this too no I didn't do the (laughs) art but look at the little ducks under the umbrella right there the little family of ducks Uh, do that for us ducks are in and out of the book so like a little they're in the background like a teaser yeah yeah, which was kind of a cool thing to yeah. To make back which to you. you know your grandkids, I had them over yeah, last I want, week. That's why I, so that was my next question. They were. By the way, those enthralled. are my grandkids. That Jace doesn't know who they are. Yeah. So just, yeah. I'm glad you know who they are. Now, I was trying to protect the identity of the kids that I did not recognize, and now you <laughs> messed that so up. So Corbin, Doc, and Pearl and Sage yep. came over, and we I read it to them, and they're just enthralled. Of course, this whole series comes with a map, an interactive, oversized I saw map. the map. Yeah. Oh, Pearl's crawling around all over it you yeah. know and they're trying to figure out where each um where each story is set on freedom island and so then at the back of the book which this is some of the best parts is there are it's called the brave challenge and there are games there are questions that you can ask your child to respond to in terms of what exactly this means because when i say it's about unconditional love we we as we as adults know what that means, but a five-year-old doesn't know what the word unconditional means. Right. And they don't understand that when they mess up, you know, sometimes our instri- instinct is to run and hide because we're ashamed. Right. I ran away at least 20 times as a kid. There you go. <laughs> I just, and Willie even more. Yeah. No, no one noticed 20 of the 20 times, so yeah. I got past it. But don't we wish that we would have understood the Father's love for us at an earlier than we when we did realize it? Because our instinct is to run and hide, but if we understand the love that is there, His arms are open for us, just like little Valor's parents' arms were open for him. Yes, they're disappointed that he disobeyed, but their arms were always ready to receive him. 
and then to also discipline him so that later he'll make better decisions. Yeah. So, but the, mm. the the back of the book has all kinds of activities and games, which I did with your grandkids, and they were super fun and they loved it. Yeah, they tell me. And that. then we asked them questions that are already there. So sometimes, you know, for a parent, it's hard to pull out of your child what you want them to understand. Right. So there are just, there are questions that you can specifically ask. You don't really have to come up with them yourself, but that will create a dialogue between you and your child about love. Which that's what I love about it, Missy. And once I got looked into it and saw what, what you guys had done with the whole series, what they've done, is that it's a way to talk about biblical themes with your kids. And yes. so I think it's so easy for, for Christians to say, oh, well, they'll get that at church. <laughs> but, but you know, there, there's a million reasons why you don't get enough. One is this one time a week. I mean, mm-hmm. to understand biblical truths, we've got to talk about it all the time. So we've got to have way well, more good, stuff like that. The good thing about this book is you could actually read this in a public school because it doesn't mention God. Or, right. It has it, some scri- scripture references well, that we put in in the well, back of the yeah, book, yeah. but in the body of the book, because I had a friend of mine, long, a, a lifelong friend, her daughter teaches at a public school, and she said, could she, could she read this to her kids? Does it say the word God in the story? And I said, actually, it does not. And she said, that's fantastic, because now she can take this and read it to her third grade yeah. class. Which is, so, which is both amazing know, and sad at the same time. It, right? it, that's it is, but, but it's look, a way to get it in there. Exactly. Let's, 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 always, hang on, Jess. Let's take a break. So one of the things, Jace, when I'm on the road that uh, I miss is my bed. Both, yeah. both my mattress, but also my sheets, because we exclusively, and have for years, even before these guys sponsored our podcast, used a, a company called Bowl and Branch Sheets. And I remember I was intrigued when we first started doing it because it said three presidents. I don't know which three uh, used these sheets, but I understand why. Uh, they're really great, lightweight, organic cotton. It's not too hot. It's not too cool. It's perfect. Uh, they're made to a higher standard. With 100% organic cotton, as I mentioned, so ethical production. These guys are great. You get a 30-day risk-free trial and free shipping on any returns, although you won't be returning this product, I don't believe, because I never have. Uh, Experience the best sheets you've ever felt at bowlandbranch.com, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. You're going to get 15% off your first order of sheets when you use the promo code Robertson. At checkout. So that's bowlandbranch.com, promo code Robertson. Save some money and get some great sheets. I've always said that's the problem. When they got God away from the schools, they got all those qualities. That are exactly just nurturing. just like this. This story is yeah, so true, and and I love the idea about it's the Titus verse about grace teaching us to say no. Yes, I mean it's when we know we're unconditionally loved that helps us, and even though there will be consequences, it does help us to understand this is what God wants us to do. That's how we grow. And sometimes we don't understand what He's trying to tell us. Just like the mom in this book, she forgot that Valor had made plans with with fun uncle Moby. And she even says, you know what? I hate that for you, but we're going to do this instead. And sometimes we don't understand that the father or Jesus, who whatever's going on in our life, a door closes and another one opens. And we just have to trust and understand that he knows better than we do and roll with the flow. And they talk about having a cheerful heart, which is not always easy, you know, as well. So did the, all of the different authors, were each given a theme like you were that, and then came up? I guess up? so. I, yeah. I just know only only because I didn't mind. read any of the other books in yours yet, although they're stacked up on my coffee mm-hmm. table. I went to, but I know it's like Dan Crenshaw and Graham Allen, people I know, veterans, mm-hmm. and I assume that probably would whatever they were talking about would be in their own life. They probably reached now. out to me because our family right. is so well known, right. you know, to take on this subject. So, which I think is precious, and I absolutely adore it. I love the whole story. I love everything about this book. Yeah. It's really good. Well, and, and again, I think there's people are always looking for resources to better, you know, teach and train your children. So I couldn't think of anything better. Well, I actually, she asked me to read it, and I actually picked it up and read the whole thing. And I have very bad attention <laughs> deficit 
So I thought, I'm trying to sell your book, babe, because I, I read it from cover to cover, and I thought. In one setting, he managed to get that book. And then she That's came out, and I said, pretty impressive, you, I said, will you marry me? <laughs> She's like, oh, I already did. <laughs> I was very yeah, if proud. If I can impress Jace, that's pretty good feat. It's so really I good. I mean, I may have that 10-year-old track still in my brain <laughs> well the luckily for us the bible was written at a fifth grade level is what i've always heard so i don't know well, exactly. how old's a fifth grader mm-hmm. yeah. 10 11 11 12 years old yeah mm-hmm. good thinking babe <laughs> see a lot everything about this is lining up so uh so that so check where, where can folks get the book they go to bravebooks.us for the first first few weeks it'll be there exclusively okay Brave. Mm-hmm. Books. Dot us and it was funny because on a previous podcast jace mentioned that you were doing a book and he mentioned the publisher was brave and, we, and he you made the point that yeah. in our culture it's amazing that it's brave to just talk about yeah. simple <laughs> biblical truths and yet it's true, true. yeah you know? and even this third grade teacher who god bless her is she she you know that's a great lesson to mm-hmm. teach the kids even without getting into the right you know, church and state stuff mm-hmm. which is unfortunate mm-hmm. excellent so so the, there's more news. <laughs> you know, it was it worked out really well when we were going to have you on to talk about the book. But since that has since that has happened, uh, your lives have changed. And I so wanted to mention it on the last overtime. Yeah, this, which, is, this is kind of breaking news, I guess. Breaking news. But, but which you we've were, broken a lot of news on the podcast. So, so a lot of, uh, you know, when you write a book, or we've all written books of different different manners i guess and then there's like a book promotion and so you're busy promoting i'm here today this was scheduled this was on the docket for a few weeks you were promoting uh unconditional love and i believe were we in a vehicle or or you had a phone call where where did that conversation it's been a blur the last week (laughs) it seems like you said i have some news i have some news for you so let me just tell it from tell it. my point. Well, I was going to say it kind of because in my mind, all I remember is I have some news. I said good or bad, and you's like, and you were like, I we, uh, didn't really know how to answer that question. Yeah. You said we have a baby, and I was like, <clears throat> do what now? <laughs> <laughs> and it was something along the lines of you know when God drops it out of the sky, you catch it. And, uh, okay, let me back up. All right, explain this. I have no idea said, where you're going. I twice said Misty needs to tell the story because I was in the middle of a conversation. I was giving here. you from my perspective, and I was he like, was reading your children's book, and he just missed the point. So, oh, last week, just a few days ago, I'm doing some of this media in on live on a podcast. And in, in the house and um, my phone starts ringing and I'm ignoring it. You know, I don't want to ever look like I'm not interested in what I'm doing. I'm like whoever that is, I'll call them back. But it was um, from one of the girls that we've done ministry with in the past. And um, she said she mentioned another girl that was also involved in all of that ministry. And she said that she had just had a baby. She was in jail, just had a baby and, and signed him over to me. Um, I said, do what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't quite hear that correctly. So and that was the conversation it. I was representing mm-hmm. when you were like, we have a baby. I was like, but, you know, that, that day was a podcast day for Jace, which, you know, is very busy for him. And we had other things going on. I had the media stuff I was doing. We had meetings in town. He was getting ready to go on a trip say, for metal also detecting. A TV show. Yeah, right. we have a TV show. So, going, you yeah. know, all of this is happening and I literally don't even have the time to process it in my brain. I don't know how to make a decision about this. I'm trying to gather information. And so the social worker gets my number and we talk and from the hospital. And I said, when was this baby born? Two days ago. And he's ready to be released. So, you know, you can come get him anytime. <laughs> uh, I said, well, that's not happening. <laughs> Um, and you're like, can you even do that? I mean, well, you know, yeah. so many questions. And as we continue the story, we won't get into the finer details sure. just because there's a lot of moving parts and it's fluid. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to help you out in telling the story. Well, so, I, I, my, you know, you know but, I did. Jace was napping at the time, you know, in between all of this. So, you know, so I said, you want to hear something crazy? <laughs> he said, good crazy or bad crazy. And I, I said, I don't know. You know, so when I told him, I didn't know what his reaction was going to be, but he was, that's amazing. 
That was an, his his response was that's amazing because number one she chose life yep. for this baby. Um, number two, I haven't spoken or seen her in over two years, and Jace baptized her. Feel you you preached to her, you shared Jesus with her. Mm-hmm. I brought her down to your house, and then Jace took her to the church building and baptized her. So that was over two years ago, and she thought of us, yeah. you know, living a life of addiction. Yep. And having a baby and thought of us as the safest place for this baby to go. Yeah. Because she well, obviously yeah. was going to go back to jail. She's back in jail. Well, right. Yeah. So hang on, let's take a break. So it's, uh, it's still kind of early in the year. I think most people, if a lot of people are like me, when to start a new year, I kind of go back in and start a new budget, look, make sure, check all my expenses. What's our money looking like? And a lot of people do that. And so it's a good time to reassess that. And one of the uh, sponsors uh, that really you probably you guys should probably check out is a group called American Home Shield, uh, because what they do is they help you when you have a uh, you know items that aren't covered. They they provide that shield that things go wrong in your home. Um, really helpful service fees, uh, limitations, exclusions apply. You have to see their plan for details. Uh, but they get a lot of coverage, you know, on things in your home, flat screen TVs, smart watches. I mean, if you have some leaking, all these kind of problems, they're there to be able to help you to be able to do that. And they're offering exclusive right now, $50 off for all of our unashamed listeners. So keep your home up and running, your budget on track with American Home Shield. Right now, unashamed listeners get $50 off the most comprehensive plans. Go to AHS ahs.com slash fill to save that money and to check out what they're offering. As I said, service fees, limitations, exclusions do apply. See their plan for details. You're, you're applauding. And that's why we're, you know, protecting her right. as far as, you know, we obviously you want people to, find their relationship with God and grace and peace. But, you know, you make bad decisions and get off track. So but, it, happens. But, it, but at least this was a good decision is what I'm saying. And we thought, even though we're not adopting the baby and we'll see where that goes, yeah. we, we she's in our custody and we have a newborn. And that's been interesting this week. <laughs> I can say so for the listeners, they're thinking, what would I do if, the phone rings one day and say, guess what? Uh, this this woman who is in prison is giving us... And trusting her, you with our child, trust yeah. Trusting with my, you with my child. So will you take this baby? I mean, do you have any help that you've called in? <laughs> <laughs> well, the... F- I mean, it's been a while since you've nursed Reed. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, our. Well, look, Jace did you, say on the Unashamed I'm podcast that a 100 year old guy had faith. I said, what about a 51 year old guy? process. And I mean, if somebody just says, here, here's my child, you want them, you like. Well, well yeah, I mean, our, our family rallied around this. Well, thing. look, I mean, that, believe me, that, that thought was very prevalent in my mind. Like, right. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, what you say, a young buck. I'm not a young doe anymore. Right. And I don't really know. A young doe. I don't yeah. know. You went through the child ring with the two boys and your Mia and then all of a sudden you know how many years ago I guess until you know Mia's what 18? 18. Yeah it's been 18. 18. So it's been 18 well, to 20 years. Since we just had, had a baby. grandbaby so at least we're you know. In I got a little re-familiarized with everything with Maris because yeah. I mean even the first day when she came home from the hospital when we were in Tennessee you know I, Brighton was like oh she needs her diaper changed. I said oh let me and I go and I layer in I layer the wrong way like I'm left-handed. I'm like wait I, I, I forgot how to how does this all work again you know because they're so tiny they're so tiny and like I need to make sure I'm doing this correctly but now I get the hang of that and the you know the feeding Brighton did herself because she breastfed but a lot of that was just um, watching from a distance now I have this baby that's totally completely dependent I mean you have on your me. oldest son and his wife who just gave birth to a Right. A baby. And that's been what, a month ago? Three. Almost <clears throat> three. Three months yeah. ago. And then this and, and you know, that that's a lot going on in a short period of time. Surprisingly, while she was getting ready to come down here, 
I was, and she was doing some book promotion stuff. Uh, so I was in charge of watching him, which he was just in where what used to be one of our little dog spots, you know, that dog's <laughs> looking. And I'm like, hey, Lord, hey. please help this family. I just, yeah, I had read that book. So I said, hey, little doggy, if you can understand this, humans oh, yeah. are more My important. My point is. Well, well, what I was going to say was, is I heard this sound, and it sounded like an explosion. And I quickly <laughs> remembered that sound from 18 years ago. So what I that said, means. babe, this baby's yeah, getting fussy. Yeah. While you're sitting over there doing nothing, and I'm on some kind of drive-in My time question at a radio is, station. And I'm sure the listeners would be wondering, where is the baby at this moment? At this moment, he is home with Mia. Right now, yeah. he is he is home and she's taking care of him. She's done that a couple of times this week because of our schedule. So which is great about having an eighteen year old. <laughs> which yeah. is like hey, which is a form of training. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for sure, oh, it is. Loves that the baby need protection, family. You said what? What? How are we going to? Yeah, I, I want to say this. I wanna, we want this woman to get her life right. Yep. But we want to put this baby in the best place to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we just made a decision after prayer and consultation that this was it at, for the short term. And so right. that's what we did. Well, and then a lot of people do get opportunities. A lot of people feel led to foster children, which sometimes leads to yeah. them adopting, sometimes it leads to other people adopting. Exactly. It, it's th What you guys are doing is a huge component in the whole idea about being pro-life because it's not just about a woman not aborting a baby it's about a life right that then someone has to invest in the life and, and not yeah. all women this are in a position far beyond you know which side you're on i mean there's a baby what are you gonna do with them well, well we right. had to say something because it's getting kind of, it was getting kind of weird when we we're getting <laughs> the strollers back out and people are looking and there's been a lot of no, just misunderstanding about like I was in Duck Commander, and it's like, is that y'all have your grandbaby? And, and what? I know there so was. I a thought, baby. well, yeah. uh, we finally realized after a week. Okay, we're gonna have to make some kind of. Well, form. we said that when we first met Phyllis, right? Everybody was like, "How do yeah. we tell this story?" Right. Because when somebody starts showing up in pictures, you well, know. what I was gonna say is like I'm in the middle of this interview about this book about unconditional love, and yeah, and so when I you know, there, there it is, there right? You go. Exactly, and so you know, Jace had to leave that night, so I called Lisa and said, "Okay." Can you, I, I need a favor from you. Can you accompany me to the hospital? Because I need to hear where her heart and her mind is right now yeah. before I just take this baby. I, I don't know anything about what she's been going through the last two years. So, of course, Lisa said, yep, pick me up in five. Let's let's go. And we did. And, you know, it's, she's in custody. Yeah. What that looks like, handcuffed to the bed. And, you know, it's it's a whole surreal situation but when she saw me, she just, you know, she just got emotional and started crying. And I sat down on the bed and put my arm around her and told her really how proud I was of her for choosing life. Yep. And, you know, her past wasn't already always like that. Yep. And um, Lisa did the same thing. And I reminded her that even though it may feel like the Lord is far away from her, when, when Phil introduced her to Jesus and when she put him on as Lord in baptism, when Jace baptized her, she has the Holy Spirit living inside of her. And he has not left her, yeah. even though she feels like maybe, which I knew, I knew I was speaking truth to her because she just kept crying. And she feels like the Lord is nowhere near her at all when he's right there. And it's just this book. It was this book that his love is never going to be too far. Yeah. And that all it takes is a conversation with him. And Lisa talked to her that night about that. And she said, you know, when we leave here, we're not taking the baby yet. We're going to, we're going to let him stay. And we worked that out with the hospital. Stay one more day until we can try to figure this out. And um, Lisa said, you and the Lord need to have a conversation tonight. And she just shook her head and said, he knows where you are, but he needs to hear it from you. Mm. What a way to launch a book. 
<laughs> I don't think so. I, I'm not saying <clears throat> he did it on purpose. Well, but that's, a, that's a little weird. Well, there. well, Missy did tell me. That's why. What I a said. marketing strategy. Well, this is about right. unconditional love. And so well, here's this child. You want him or not? You're like, uh, uh, Phil, hang, you're, you're hang on. Let's take a break. Phil, you're right. I mean, Missy came in there and she's like, I've been talking about unconditional love for two days. And that's where that phrase came when she said, I feel like if a baby drops out of heaven from God, we should catch it. <laughs> and I thought, it's a great one. I like that line, babe. I it like, literally oh, felt that like child, that's what happened. When the yeah. child gets old enough to understand their background, it's a male or female? Male. Yeah, male. Uh, can you imagine what what would go through his mind? He said, now, well, wait a minute here. How did I get here? I thought about the but, same thing. But, Whatever role y'all play for however long, this this baby and then later it's going to be a boy and a young man will always be in your hearts because you are a <laughs> yeah. part of that process <laughs> yep. to, to make sure that he stays healthy and alive mm-hmm. uh, during this era. In a weird way, he comes through the, 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 the people of God. Yeah. That's right. Well, to me, it's forever look, family. to me, I mean, <clears throat> this is the most busy I've been in my life. That's right. I mean, I took a few years off there after, you know, the duck show and all. And we we mentioned my that he, in his, he thought he was retired. His retirement went from zero to 100 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, so, yeah. But what I'm saying is the fact that I'm so busy right now, that's when I laughed and I thought, yeah, I can see this. Yeah. This is this is this is God saying, "Okay, you think you're busy, big boy." Right. Yeah, let's, one let's one stop. of our friends said, "Isn't God?" I thought she was going to say, "Good." She said, "Isn't God funny?" <laughs> <laughs> so he's hilarious. <laughs> I'll tell you this: like, uh, it brings out the best in people because you know we were one day in all this chaos. We we have a schedule that we kind of go by on the TV show and we were obviously late because of the, the baby and uh, Missy was involved. It kind of was a funny, funny thing we did, but uh, I just, I don't, I don't think I meant to introduce this, but I said something about the doctor calling and Missy's getting the baby straight. And the one of the producers said, like, no baby. I was like, Oh yeah, we got a new baby. But I just wasn't realized, you know what I mean? That Jace. he's like, what do what? But his immediate response, then I realized I probably shouldn't have said that on the phone. <laughs> you think? And, uh, but he was like, and I quickly told him the story, and, and, and I was just shocked at his response. He's like, you take all the time you need. We're here to the support The support has been hunt. amazing. Yeah, and it was like, it, of course, then when that got out, so then they all just voiced their, there's like, we will stop whatever we have to do. And, and allow this to move because forward. they were impressed to, that you guys were doing. Well, that. I just think you know, it comes down to life. That what you said, the value of life. Right. Mm-hmm. And you got a tough situation. And look, there are many tough situations out there, over and over and over and over. And you just see uh, a window of hope here, of of a chance right. to break the cycle here, to break the. But lake. you know, is it y'all are new grand turns of uh, <clears throat> living a godly life in Christ Jesus? are many and surprisingly <laughs> but it's how other people view you that's what because she yeah. she she went back to that she went back two mm-hmm. years yeah. to having that realization that this is a person that can help me out but it's funny Jay, you guys are new grandparents and so we talk about forgetting and you were describing that about the explosion in the diaper I mean, I remember keeping my girls and, you know, if it was just me there, I mean, you know, that happens. It's a kid, you change the diaper. But then all these years go by and I've got my grandkids. And so I was keeping them. They were left at the house and Pearl and Doc were both still in diapers. And Doc just has a massive disaster. And I'm thinking, and Lisa and Alice are gone, and I'm like, what, is it? Would it be wrong if I just waited till they got back? And then I thought, <laughs> oh, it's a baby, you know, it's a child. He's got this something needs to be done. But I'm gonna, I'm having a debate with myself yeah. as to whether I can go in or not because this is a bad one. It's <laughs> one of the good things about the mask deal because there's some land. Oh, exactly. Oh, I had, a, I had the full. I look like the videos of the guy with the thing over his nose. Well, cause cause I'm I gagging. looked in there at the mask, but I went in there and I tried to do the old wise grandpa thing because you are. Calling me Paul now, so I was like, "There's something wrong with this kid." And uh, but Missy's like, 
I'm busy. You know. Well, we had. She's we like, had we girl. have a babysitter in between Mia taking over. <laughs> I mean, who's out? The girl that works for. Her. She'll be. She'll be here. Any rolling minute. up any second. Well, actually, so. when I walked back in, she was walking in. Woo! Say about the bell. Yeah. That, I said, I just heard some explosion <laughs> from the lower border regions, and she said, I'm on it. So I thought, yes. <laughs> Well, you know, and I, I called Jessica and told her about it, and I should have led with this. I should have led with, okay, first, we're not adopting. Now, here's the story. Because when I started talking, she went, wait, are you adopting? I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I, should, I buried the lead. That, that's the lead. It's that we're not adopting. We're just, I feel like we're being used in this interim, in the in-between, whatever the in-between looks like. and because well, it's Lisa, a little complicated. Right. Lisa helped forward. me so much that Monday night because, again, my brain was on so many different things. You know, she contacted the adoption lawyer in town just to get us some legal advice. Right. Like, what do I do about this? And so um, at one point Monday night, I think I texted her and said, I have to turn my brain off. I have to stop trying to figure this out and just be quiet and listen. Yep. And... And so she said, good night, take, get some rest. And so when I woke up the next morning, I had so much more clarity about it because I've been praying all night about it, you know, off and on waking up. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to call all of the girls across the street, which is Sadie, Mary Kate, Rebecca, and Corey. All having babies. Because I said, I, need, I have nothing. If I go get this baby from the hospital today, even if it is just for a few hours or one night, I have nothing. They're not going to just hand me the baby. <laughs> so immediately I sent them a text and said, longer story, but this is what I need. Can anybody help me? And immediately, you know, Mary Kate called. I've got everything you need. Come get it. We'll bring it over, whatever. You know, Corey texted, Sadie texted. So, and then, you know, I'm on the phone with Brighton all day. I'm like, I got to make a target run. What do I need? She sends me a list of everything I need. The support from our family, yeah. it was just like they jumped on it. We needed quickly. And yeah. then we, it took us a couple of days to work out the sleeping arrangements and, uh, just or, or, or lack for, thereof. For you, for you. <laughs> this was your idea. You're the one that said I needed some rest. I did. Going. And so, well, what, for whatever it's worth, peace be with you. <laughs> yeah. We need so it. That first two nights, cause I was, I mean, look, I'm working 12 hours a day here. But it's hard to do when you're not getting much sleep and you're waking up every three hours, which I know other people are doing it. But, hey, you're younger than us. <laughs> I and told so, you, Jason, said, there's a reason why the Almighty set it up where you're having kids mm -hmm. in your 20s because you can do right. the all-nighters a well, lot easier. Well, when I'm having to get my glasses out to, like, I'm putting a Sharpie on the ounces on the bottle because I can't see them. Yeah. That, I'm like, that alone should tell you 50-year-olds don't need to be raising glasses. babies. Yeah. 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 But we're doing it, and uh, and it's probably going to be for a little while here yet. So we're doing podcasts. I'm doing interviews with people, announcing another book. Somebody said Mitch has got a baby. I'm like, what? <laughs> really? Uh, that was that was probably K. Okay, I was like, okay, I, was like, I thought <laughs> well, we kept I'm... it under wraps pretty well <laughs> until now. Well, but... what's crazy is she was telling me she was doing a live radio interview, you know, and she's like burping the baby <laughs> in between yeah. the segments. She's like, I know they heard that. They're probably thinking, but she, she must have that grandbaby, yeah. you know, and she, yeah. or, or maybe she's just gassy or something. Yeah. Maybe it's, well. <laughs> but I do, I'm praying very wholeheartedly. And I ask the audience to, to pray for what is best for this baby. I have uh, my own opinions about it, but I want, you know, the will of the Lord to be prevalent in this entire situation. And whatever that is, we want to be the conduits for that. Well, we're out of time. <clears throat> But I want to, during the overtime, are you going to be able to stay for overtime? Sure, yeah. sure. Well, uh, overtime, I want to discuss a little bit more of that idea of, because I, I know the audience is going to be, you know, what if we get this opportunity? What is this? How would we do this? How would we, how would my family manage something like huh, that? So Step by step. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that <laughs> in overtime. So we'll, uh, we'll catch you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.